Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is DJ Rick Webb as always and today this was a long overdue video. We're going to be doing programming in Show Express. Full dive in. I'm going to show you exactly how you program in Shave Show Express. This is actually going to be part one of a two part uh, video here on how to program in Shavi Show Express, mostly because DMX programming is a little bit complicated. So in the first video, I'm just going to kind of break down how we program and going to talk strictly about simple fixtures such as PARs, such as those Shave Wash FX 2s, things that just do colors, no movements, nothing crazy like that, no prisms, no gobos, like you would find in like the ADJ InnoSpot Pros. We're gonna strictly be talking about fixtures that do one thing, and that's color. Now, I am going to be jumping kind of straight into this video, so I've already made two other videos that you might wanna go watch, actually three videos that you might wanna go watch. The first one just talks about lighting in general and how you can set up your lighting to create unique looks. The second one is how DMX works, so you can understand understand how DMX channels work, how to set up your lights, and how to set them up in the Shave Show Express software. So if you need that info, go see that. And then also today, we're running wireless DMX, um, just plugged in back here. I also made a video on how wireless DMX works and my personal system of choice, which is donor uh, wireless DMX transmitters. So let's jump into Shave Show Express here and let's start this video off. All right, so I have Show Express pulled up right here, but we need to back back out for a second because before we dive into it, I gotta explain to you how my programming logic works as a lighting designer. This is my personal take on how I do my lighting in Show Express. Every designer is different. You guys can feel free to do it my way or come up with something yourself. So the way my logic breaks down is I want to control each type of fixture I have individually. So I want my movers to be able to do one thing and I want my PARs and my Wash FX2s to do another thing. So that is how my programming is broken down. So I have different scenes for each type. So my movers have a set of scenes, my PARs have a set of scenes, my up lights have a set of scenes, etc. Then each type of fixture, so say we take the PARs, is broken into layers. And with these different layers, we can create a bunch of different combinations to make our lighting very unique. All right, so in every different type of fixture that I own, the first layer of scenes that we have is colors. So we have different combinations of colors that we can apply to these fixtures, such as like red, green, blue, yellow, white different combinations of color. The second layer in my programming is strobes. So do we want to strobe the light or do we not want to strobe the light? We want to have control of that so that we can take all these different colors and we can strobe them if we want to or we cannot strobe them. So that is a layer that we're going to. So first layer up here is colors, second layer is strobes. And in terms of the lights that we're gonna be talking about today, which are PARs, Shave Wash FX2s, uh, up lights, those are all the layers that I have for those lights because they don't have any extra functionality. Now in the second video, part two that I'm gonna be making, we're gonna be adding in movers and showing you guys how movers operate. And movers add a third and fourth layer to that combination. The third layer is going to be our positions and our movements. So with a moving light fixture, such as a spot, a beam, a wash fixture, we're gonna have colors, we're gonna have strobes, and then we're gonna be able to move those lights. We're gonna be able to move them around the room or we're gonna be able to set them at a certain point so that just more combinations that we can make. And then our fourth layer is going to be gobos and prisms so we can do different shapes with a spot fixture or a beam fixture and then we can apply prisms to break that out. Now don't worry about that just now, we're gonna be talking about that in part two. I just want you to get the idea that the logic that I have in terms of programming is first off, I wanna be able to control each of my fixtures independently. I want my wash fixtures to be controlled separately. I want my movers to be controlled separately. I want my up lighting to be controlled separately. And then each one of those types of fixtures, we have different layers, colors, strobes, etc. But today we're just gonna be worried about colors and strobes. So for today's tutorial, like I said, we're gonna be using PARs and we're using two of the ADJ Mega Hex Pars. Very affordable lights if you guys are beginners looking to get into lights. I think they're about like 100 bucks a piece. But we have two different channels addressed to these. We're running 255 and 233, and they're running on eight channel mode. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go refer to my video on how to set up DMX. It walks you through everything in terms of channels, setting up fixtures, and all that. 
please go watch that video before you move forward of this video because that video is going to explain a lot of the stuff um, that I'm doing in this in this tutorial. Video link is in the description down below and the first comment, then come back to this video. But with that said, let's jump into Show Express and let's see how this works. All right guys, so we're in Shave Show Express and I wanted to start off this tutorial kind of backwards a little bit. I wanted to show you guys what it looks like when it's fully set up for me. So I have two pages here. That is what one of these is called. Uh, in Show Express, you have different pages that you can access. We have our color layer and we have our strobe layer. Now, as you see on the right here, you have strobe white all, mover strobe overlay, and par strobe overlay. Obviously, for this demo, the only strobe overlay that I have or the strobe layer is the par strobe. So that's all that button does right here. So on the left, we have different combinations of colors. We've got this red, green, blue one. We have this white, yellow one. We have this blue and white one, and as you can kind of see here, each light does a different thing. I don't know if you can really tell on camera. We have a pink-purple combination. We have fades, so we can do fade colors as well. We have gig color. Gig color is that setup color that I'm setting for the gig. I'll explain how that works here as well. And then obviously, we have these different colors, and then we can combine it with the strobe overlay to create different patterns and different stuff at our events. So we can do any color we want and then we can strobe it if we wish to. We can also go to white and strobe white or we can just click the strobe button if we wanna be a little bit quicker to it. I've also gone ahead and created kind of this like, I call it a rave mode. It's basically UV and then strobing. So little different things that you can create. And now that I showed you kind of how this works when it's done, let me show you how you actually set this up. So in Show Express, you're always gonna start out in the editor. And right here are fixtures. I explained this in the last video on how you set up DMX. So go watch that video to explain how this works. But this is where you add in all of your different fixtures. Like you can see on the right here, these are kind of the icons for all my different fixtures I own. And then they're all in Shago Show Express. The main area where you actually create scenes is in steps and in generator. Now generator is a little bit more advanced and generator is more or less used for movements such as with our movers. So we're not gonna be covering that in this video. We're gonna strictly be talking about steps in this video. So now that we're in steps, let's go ahead and let's create our first scene. So just to give you a little bit of a background here, all of your fixtures that you can select are on the left here. So I wanna use both of my he mega hex pars. So if you have added in just two of your pars, you can select mega hex here, and then you wanna press your control on your keyboard to select your second one. So now I have both of my mega hex pars available here to create our steps. I wanna interrupt the video real quick to explain something that I talked about in the first video for a second, but I said I would reiterate it again in this video because it's kind of important. When you're setting up fixtures such as behind me, I have two pars. You don't have to set up two separate pars if you don't want to. You can definitely set up both of those pars as the exact same par in Shave Show Express. As you will notice, I only have three mega hex pars, and really I only use two in all of my programming. And basically we have channel 225 and 233, and we alternate that around the room with all the different pars that we're using, so that way we have some sort of contrast with our lighting. But you definitely could just set those all up as the same DMX channel if you want to. Again, if you don't understand what I'm talking about with DMX channels, please go watch the first video. It explains this point again, but just wanted to let you know that basically if you have six pars, you don't have to have six pars in Show Express. You could have two, you could have one, you could have all six, whatever you choose. All right, so now let's create our first scene in Shave Show Express. Now, you don't have to have lights set up ready to DMX like the ones behind me back here, but it does make it a lot easier. You definitely could use the 3D viewer. I've used it before to create some of our bigger shows, but in general, most of the time you're doing this programming once, and then it's set up and ready to go for all your events. So I highly recommend if you're doing it for your first time, setting up your lights, so you can see exactly what you're doing. So what I'm gonna wanna do, and you guys wanna have to do this, but I'm gonna wanna go to live and deactivate that. So that way I can now activate it here by pressing this green button. That means that the DMX signal is now going to the lights. So like I explained in the video on how DMX works, we're gonna want to first up our dimmer. Next, we're gonna wanna up our shutter. And now we can start adding colors. So let's make our first one red. All right, now over here on the right, you see a number one. So this is the first step in the sequence. If we wanna create another step, we would click the insert button here to insert a second step. We could also press the add button 
to add another step as well. And then you also have options like copy, paste. You can delete a step right here with this button. So if I wanna delete step one, I can do that. And if you wanna move your steps around, you can do that as well. So now if you notice, one and step two are the exact same color. So we wanna go in here and we wanna remove this red. Let's make it green. So we're gonna activate the green and add it up in. So now we have step one, if we click on it as red, step two is green. All right, let's continue. Let's insert another one here. So we're gonna go to three and it carries the last one you did. So if you click insert when you're on green, the next one's gonna be green. So let's now make this one blue. There we go. Now I also wanna point out that if you wanted to create your color via the color wheel, you can absolutely do that as well. So I can go in here and say instead of blue, I wanna make it this teal color. So I can select this teal color, it automatically adjusts the faders to make that color. So you can do that if you would like as well. All right, let's go to the fourth step here to show you one little thing that you might have noticed. As I am adjusting the green fader on hex par three, it also adjusts the fader on the other light. If you can see there, both faders, both green faders are moving at the same time. Same thing with the blue, they both move at the same time. If I wanted to take these completely down, Say I wanted to add amber. They both move at the same time, so they're synced. If you would like to do, say, the left par amber and the right par white, what you're gonna wanna do is click this button up here. It's ungroup fixtures. So now the fixtures are ungrouped, so I can control them individually. So I'm gonna adjust this one. This is my left par, apparently, and this is my right par. So I wanna make the right par white, so we're gonna do that and now those pars are different. So now, again, we have our red, our green, our teal, and our white and our amber. Now, I wanna see what these steps are gonna look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the play button here to play this step sequence. So right there, we got our teal, and then we're fading into the amber white, and now we're fading into red. Now, I, I don't want them to fade. I want them to be like instant, like blue, kind of like this. I want it to go red, and then I want it to go instant green, and then I want it to go instant teal. So what you need to do is down here at the bottom of all of these channels. As you can see, this kind of looks like a slope, which indicates that this channel is set to fade. So what you want to do is you want to tap it and it'll create this little hard cut here, meaning that it is no longer gonna be fade, it's gonna be hard cut. And what you're gonna to have to do is go in and set that for every single one of these channels. So you wanna set it for all of them so that they're all gonna be hard cut. You could group the fixtures, that way it's a little bit quicker. But if you're in this case where we've already done four steps, we don't wanna go into every single every single one of these steps and go through and do that, that would take forever. So what you can do is you can right click on that and you can select this right here to set fade state to channel on all steps. So if I select that, now if we go to two, it'll be a hard cut as well on two. It will be a hard on three and on four. So now if I go through and just do that on all of them, they will now all be like that. They will all be hard cuts. So if I go through and do that on all these, the better thing you can do is actually just restart. So if you go back to the first one here where we already have all these set up to be hard cuts, but they're not fades. So if we click insert now, number two, will automatically have all those. So just know when you are starting to create your step sequence, if you are going for a quick sort of hard cut between like green, red, blue, pink, purple. Make sure you set all your faders to this hard cut or fade. I don't know what really the wording, I'm gonna go with hard cut instead of a fade. Vice versa, if you're creating a fade sequence, make sure you set them to fade. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna go in, we're gonna make number two, we're gonna make it, uh, we're gonna go green over here. So I'm gonna do a little fancy for you guys. We're gonna do green here so that number one, and then they switch in number two. Kind of cool, right? So now let's click play real quick. And after five seconds, it will switch. There you go. Now five seconds between transition, that's pretty slow. So we wanna speed that up a little bit. Now, over here on the right window, you'll see a duration. So you can go in and each one of these steps, you can go down here and adjust the time. But the better thing to do is go down to total time here and we wanna adjust the total time. Say we wanna make the total time uh, three seconds and then we press enter 
and then it's going to say, would you like to recalculate all steps? And it'll say yes, and it makes each one of them one and a half seconds. Very simple. So now when we play it, it'll be one and a half seconds, and then switch. One and a half seconds, then switch. One and a half seconds, then switch. And obviously you can go in and adjust it to be even quicker if you would like to. So this is my first simple sequence. It's like a red-green theme, kind of like a Christmassy theme. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this now. So if I click here and click Save Scene As, it's gonna now pop up a little save window for me and I can call it what I wanna call it. So I'm gonna call this YouTube Red Green, RG and I'm gonna click save. So now let's create a new scene and let's make this one a fade scene. So we're gonna click add new scene here and it resets everything and we're gonna want to up our fader, up our strobe and I'm gonna click up here to group my fixtures that way they're grouped now and I'm going to add some red and green in this first step. And then we're gonna click insert to add that second one and on the second one I'm gonna make it green and blue. So we have a little bit of a cool fade here. Now I'm gonna adjust the total time, and I want the total time for this whole entire fade to be five seconds. And we're gonna recalculate. All right, 250, 250. And now if I click play, we're gonna see a nice gradual fade. And if you guys can see on the screen right here, it shows you in live what those faders are doing to fade in between all of those colors creates an awesome fade for us to work with. All right, we're gonna click stop here. And now we're gonna save as again. And we're gonna save this as a uh, YouTube fade. All right, so now we have two scenes created. Now we wanna be able to play those scenes in the live panel. So I'm gonna deactivate our DMX here and we're gonna go to live. And you guys won't have pages established already. But for me, I do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the button here and I'm going to click add page and I'm going to call this uh, YouTube for this demo. So here is our new page and now we want to add our scenes. So we're going to click here and we're going to click to add pop up scene. So pop up add scene. It's going to pull up the folder where we have our scenes right there are our two YouTube. I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to click open. And now we have both of our scenes in here. So if I select YouTube RGB, we now have YouTube RGB going. So now if I select YouTube fade, we'll have a YouTube fade. It is that simple to create colors in Show Express. Now, a quick thing I wanna point out, if I already have YouTube fade selected and I press YouTube RGB, oh, whoa, it's, both buttons are selected now, we don't want that. We want it set up so that when we select one button, the other button deactivates. So what you wanna do is click this button again, and for this page, we wanna activate solo buttons. So when you activate solo buttons, now when I select this one, it goes to fade. When I select this one, it deselects the other button. Just a little pro tip there, make sure you set all of your pages to have solo buttons, that way you don't select multiple buttons and have all kinds of craziness going on the same page. All right, now I'm looking at this red-green combination. Now, one other thing you might wanna do inside your page is change your button color. So what you wanna do is right-click either of the buttons, whatever button you wanna change, right-click it, and what you can do is go down here to button color. And you can select the color that you wanna make this button. So this one is a red-green combination. I wanna make this button red. So there we go, the button is now red. So now this button below is a fade, so I'm gonna right click it, we're gonna go to button color, and I'm gonna make it yellow. Yellow just seems like a fade color for me. And you can color coordinate your buttons that way. So there we go with some colors, so that way we can activate either one of them simultaneously. You can also move your buttons around, so if I go to like a page where I have par colors, where I have a lot of these, you can actually right click them and click the move button and you can move them right, left, all around the screen to adjust it how you would like. You can also go in and rename these buttons. So if I wanna rename it and not call it YouTube RGB, I just wanna call it RGB, I can do that. One of the coolest things you can do with DMX is make it so that the lights 
match exactly to the tempo of the music. And as you can see right here on the right hand side, we have a BPM. And this is the BPM that you would be playing your track at. So if you're playing your track at 128, you would want this to say 128. And you can actually tap this button right here to the beat of the music and it will adjust. So 105. But the lights right now do not adjust to that BPM. So what we want to do is adjust the speed property of that said button. So red green over here is like one and a half seconds in between adjusting. So what we want to do is go into our speed properties. So we right click it, we click on speed properties, and now we want to set this to manual BPM. Now you can also set this to auto BPM and what Shavisho Express will do is use your laptop microphone to listen to the music it hears and adjust the BPM accordingly. I personally don't like to do this because I normally have a lighting tech on hand programming the lights and changing them in that. So we normally do manual BPM. That way he can press this button over here and adjust the BPM accordingly. So I click apply. And now as I adjust this BPM, so say I go up really fast. If I go to 181, it'll go faster. Say I go slower, I adjust it down to 60, it'll go slower. So that way you can coordinate your lights to be matching the exact tempo and the exact beat of the music you are playing. Now obviously for something like a fade, we don't want to adjust the speed properties of this because it's just a gradual fade. This is pretty much set the way we want it. We want it to do a nice slow even fade. We don't really want to speed it up or slow it down so we're going to leave it as is. Alright so now let's go back to editor real quick and let's create a gig color button because we want to have the ability to change the color of the specific lights for a gig. So to create that gig color, we're going to deactivate whatever we're doing right now. We're going to go here. Let's activate our DMX one more time. And we're going to create new. So we're going to create a new scene. And let's just go ahead and select the color we want. Again, we have to up our fader and up our strobe real quick. It doesn't matter. We can select any color we want. Let's say we're going to do pink because pink is very popular. So we're going to do that. And I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to make it a little more pink with the UV. And I'm going to remove the blue. So we got a really nice hot pink. So all UV and red. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to hard cut all these because I want it to be instantly changing to this gig color. And for a get color, we only have to do one step. We just want that color. You can do the same thing if you just want to have UV only or if you want to have blue. You just do one step, you set the color, and then we're going to go in and we're going to save it as that color. So I call this uh, YouTube gig color. Click save. Now we deactivate our DMX here. Again, we go back to our live window. We click this. We click pop up add scene. It should pop up here at the top somewhere. YouTube gig color. We're going to open it. And there we go. And this kind of is where I can show you guys how you move buttons around. So if I click and click move button. And I want this to be the big one at the bottom, right? So I'm going to go over. And I'm going to make it a so that we have three there. So you can play around these buttons and kind of move them around. Move it left and right. And really create some very interesting combinations with your buttons. So I like that one right there. And now if we click YouTube gig color, we have pink. And yet again, we have solo buttons activated so we can instantly switch between all of our buttons very quickly. So once you have something like the gig color set up and I want to edit it, I want to change the gig color. So I'm going to a wedding now and the wedding color is not pink. The wedding we just did was pink. I want to make it white now. She wants cool white for her gig color. Um, so I want to change it to white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it again. I'm going to go to edit. And what that's going to do is going to take us directly into this step to edit it. So I want to activate our DMX again. And I want to remove this red. I want to remove the UV. And I want to do just pure white. And then all you do is click save. Click save real quick. I'm going to deactivate our DMX. It goes back to pink. So let's go back to white. Let's deactivate our gig color and then reactivate it. And now we have white. So that is how at an event you could create a gig color and then go back and edit it very easily to recreate that color to whatever color the wedding or the school dance or the event that you want to do. And obviously if I go to edit and I wanted to make one of those amber, I can do that as well. A lot of times when I'm doing gig color, I don't activate it, but I can activate it real quick. Um, I need to ungroup. I need to go down on the amber here and go white. 
so you can do multiple colors with multiple fixtures. Very simple. I hope that makes a lot of sense for you guys. That is how you create all of your color sequences. The question you're gonna ask is, how do I do this par strobe overlay right here? Very simple, it's actually extremely simple. So let me show you guys how we do that real quick. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to our editor, we're gonna create a new scene. We have both of our pars already here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up my fader real quick and I'm gonna up white. So first thing again, need to activate the DMX so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll show you guys in a second we're actually gonna deactivate these channels. But what we're gonna to wanna to do now is adjust our shutter. You can kinda of see right there, it's called shutter. If you hover over it, it tells you. But shutter is your strobe speed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust it down. And if I remember right, it's like 219 is the right amount for strobe. All right, I was wrong, 223. Now I'm gonna deactivate that for a second to remind you guys that if you go into the manual of your fixture, such as the ADJ Mega Hex PARs that I have here. Inside of the manual, it will tell you what the maximum strobe percentage is, or you can play around with it like I did to figure out what value it is. Now that we have our shutter set correctly, we want the fader to be up and we want to make sure it's on full. And now I want to deactivate white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the channel, I'm going to right click it and I'm going to press disable channel. So now no colors are on, but our fader and our shutter is up at full. And now just like this, we're going to save it. So we're going to save scene as YouTube stroke. Now if you guys can understand the logic here of what we're doing, basically because we have our different layers, we have the color layer already established in the live window. These are our colors. These are our combinations of different colors. So when we're creating the strobe overlay, we don't want to change any of the colors. So we want those channels disabled so that when you activate this scene, it will not adjust any of these color channels that are already active. It will only adjust the fader and the shutter. So we're going to deactivate it here and we're going to go back to our live window real quick. I am going to quickly create a new page so that way we can start fresh. All right, so we're once again going to click pop up add scene and we're going to click on YouTube strobe there, open it in. And now we have our strobe here. So if we just click it, it does nothing. So let's say we activate our gig color real quick. Now when we click YouTube strobe, it strobes. And then when you let off of it, it stops strobing. So there's your red green combination. You click strobe and it's good to go. And that right there guys is how simple it is to program in Show Express. Feel free to go watch back through this video, but basically you are going in and creating a bunch of color scenes and then for pars, you're just creating a strobe. So that way you have an option to strobe the lights themselves. It's that simple guys. You can get very, very complicated with your combinations. So if I go back to my par colors, I went ahead and activated white, but you guys can see kind of some of the combinations that I have. And these are the same combinations I've been using for quite some time now. We got a red, green, blue. We have a yellow, white combination. I can up the BPM real quick. As you guys can see, anything with manual BPM at the bottom of it is a manual BPM. Our fades obviously don't have manual BPM. Our white only, our UV only, the gig color. Now, some of you might be asking, I have this ray button that's just UV then strobe. Obviously, this doesn't use the strobe overlay. If I click the strobe overlay, it's gonna strobe the whole entire time. Um, but rave is just, I made a combination of sequences where step one, is UV, actually I can pull it up for you guys. So if we go to edit right here, you can kind of see my combinations. So step one is a strobe, step two is UV, step three is UV, and then step four is a strobe. So I have a little bit more steps um, to kind of break it up a little bit, but if you see right here, my shutter is set to 223 on the strobe with white, and then the second one is UV only. All of them are on hard cut. Guys, this is honestly just something you play around with in steps. You create all these different button combinations and then you have your strobe overlays. But yeah guys, I hope that was pretty simple and easy to follow. Pars, like I said, are just two simple layers, colors and then strobes. So you get to basically play around with it, create a bunch of different creative scenes. You can get really creative and create like 10 steps if you would like, or eight steps and make the lights do all kinds of crazy different things if you would like, or you can make them all simple. You can do like just a red, green, blue, and a yellow light if you want to just have a red button, a green button, a blue button. But one thing you want to consider is that when you start looking at all your other fixtures, such as your moving heads, 
uh, you don't want to be pushing all these buttons and also pushing all these buttons. That's why I create like red, green, blue combinations and then we use the manual BPM to match it to the BPM of the songs we're playing. Leave down in the comment section down below if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. I can probably answer them in part number two if I hadn't already filmed part number two already. Be sure to slap a big like on this video. Be sure to share this video because I don't think anyone is making any really easy to follow Shabe Show Express tutorials. So share this video on all your Facebook groups and all your Instagrams and YouTubes and all your buddies that use sound active lights that look like crap, um, share it with them so they can see how easy it is really to actually DMX lights. It's not that complicated. I'll say this one last time, Shabby Show Express, by far the easiest to learn intro level DMX software. Way better than this thing right here. I actually own an ADJ Airstream Bridge. This thing is garbage. It's so hard to program. This is so much easier and way more powerful than anything this can do. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Like always, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning, guys, and I will see you guys next time with amazing, awesome tutorial, tips, gig logs. You know it. We, all, we got everything on this channel. Peace.